Okay, so we're finishing off with the Bohr model of the atom. So we're going to talk about the shortcomings. The first shortcoming is that it doesn't work for any atoms that are larger than hydrogen, namely because it only works for something that has one electron. Uh, the second shortcoming is that it doesn't explain chemical behavior. On the other hand, the quantum model of the atom does do those things. And um, the first point is that electrons behave both as waves and as particles. And this was first founded by Louis de Broglie in 1924, where he determined that electrons have wave-like properties, and he considered the electron as a wave confined to space that can only have certain frequencies. So his model is drawn right here, where you see that it is very similar to Bohr's model of, of of the orbits around the nucleus, but he also does show the wave properties of electrons having different wavelengths and different frequencies. Okay, the second scientist on quantum theory was Heisenberg, and Heisen Heisenberg has a very famous uncertainty principle, and his famous quote is that it is impossible to determine simultaneously both the position and velocity of an electron or any other particle. Part A is that electrons are located by their interactions with photons. Um, electrons and photons have similar energies, and interactions between a photon and an electron knocks the electron off of its course. Um, another thing that's very important to mention in the uncertainty principle is that the very act of measuring one variable, either the position or the velocity alters the other. So we are unable to come up with any machinery and equipment that allows us to figure out the exact position or the exact velocity of an electron. It's virtually impossible to do so. That's why all of this is based on theory and it's not experimentally uh, determined. father of quantum theory, and probably one of the more important, is the Schrodinger. The Schrodinger and uh, Ernest Schrodinger had this famous wave equation, and uh, he proved that quantization of electron energies, and this is the basis for quantum theory. Quantum theory describes mathematically the wave properties of electrons and other very small particles. Uh, the second part is that electrons do not move around the nucleus in planetary orbits as we're known, um, as we're figured out by Bohr, and that's the way we learn things in chemistry to begin with, with our electron configurations. Um, however, he did say that electrons do exist in regions called orbitals, and orbitals are three-dimensional regions around the nucleus that indicate a probable location. So we don't know for sure that an electron is there, but we do know with about 90% probability that that is where you will find an electron. And putting a Schrodinger wave equation into a pictorial diagram, um, we have our electron box diagrams that we learn um, to do our electron configurations, and this is thanks to the Schrodinger wave equation. 